Number 17. The initial concentrations or pressures of reactants and products are given for each of the following systems. Calculate the reaction quotient and determine the direction in which each system will proceed to reach equilibrium. So let's work on the first thing, right? Let's try to find out that reaction quotient. And they give me an equation here for letter F. So I see that there's already coefficients. So I'm going to assume it's balanced. So let's just write out that equation. I got N2 gas plus O2, and that's also a gas. And this is allowed to come to equilibrium with 2NO, and that's a gas. Now, they gave me pressure values, and I have a KP. P stands for pressure, so I should be given pressure values. ATM is a unit for pressure. So I'm just going to write down what I got. Well, they told me that the NO was 10 ATM, so NO is a product. I'm just going to say that this was 10 ATM. And then it says that N2 is the same as O2. Those are both 5 ATMs. So I got 5 ATM here, and I got 5 ATM here. All right. Now, since I have numbers on opposite sides of the yield sign or the equilibrium sign, I can't really figure out which way I'm going. Am I going to go to the right or am I going to go to the left, right? So that's when we find out the Q. So here's the Q formula down here. We did tons of practice figuring out how to find a Q value, right? It's just products over reactants. So let's get started with that. We got the QP and it's P because it has to match with what the K is saying. So if you have a KP, you have to have a QP. Okay. So now products over reactants, the NO divided by these two, we're talking about pressures. So I have to say capital P, the pressure of NO. And now since I have a coefficient, it always has to be raised to the coefficients, right? There's two of these. So I'm just going to square this. Okay. And guys, just remember, I didn't really do this step because I, I did it in my mind, but remember that Aqueous and gases are only allowed in this formula. But since we have gas, gas, and gas, I know that each one of these three are going to be included in my formula. Okay, now back to it. Now I'm doing the reactants, right? So I got a pressure of N2. And I don't see any number here. That means that I just have one of them. So I don't have to basically raise this to the first. That's the same thing. But now I'm going to multiply this with, so maybe I'll just put like a times, the pressure of the O2, right? And this same thing, I don't see a number here. That means that I just have one. So I don't have to raise this to the first. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just get rid of this multiplication sign and I'll just put the parentheses around both of these. And there you go. Now let's plug in the numbers. QP equals something over something else. Let's do top to bottom. The NO was 10. Whoop, what happened there? The NO was 10 ATM. So I have 10.0. And because of the formula, I got to square that. Divided by the N2, which was 5. And the O2 was also 5. All right, let's get one number for the top, one number for the bottom, and then we just divide them, right? So let's see, 10 squared is 100. Whoa, what happened there? 100, and then five times five is 25. So 100 divided by 25, I get four. Okay, and there's my QP. So that's the answer to the first part. I just actually want to just double check because you never can be too certain that I did my mental math right, but I'm pretty sure that I did. Yeah, okay. So now we're going to determine the direction. This is where you compare your QP with your KP. And what you're gonna do, there's a little trick here, guys. 
always put the QP or the Q on the right-hand side and put the K on the left-hand side of your uh, comparison chart. So I'm going to say that my Q was a 4 and my KP they gave me, which was a 0 0.050. Now make the relationship between KP and QP. Well, this number is bigger than 0 0.05. So I know that the KP is less than the QP, right? The alligator, the teeth of the alligator chomps on the bigger number, right? <laughs> Terrible drawing. And now, whenever that happens, right, we're here. When the K is less than the Q, you have way more products than you should. So you got to get rid of them. And that's why you would go from the products to the reactants. But now there's the trick. Here we go. You see this? Treat this as an arrowhead and pull this back. <gasps> Look at that. It's an arrow. And you see it's going this way? So that's a trick, guys. Now it says determine the direction. You're going to either proceed to the left or shift to the left. But either one is the correct answer. You're going in the reverse direction. You're going from the products to the reactants. All right. So hopefully that helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. And I hope you guys are doing well out there. Let's keep studying hard. If you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button. I really, truly appreciate that. Thank you so much. We're almost at 15,000. So let's keep going. All right. I'll see you all in the later lessons. Bye-bye.